Hello everyone, I'm Ricky Floyd. I'm the uh, Senior Pastor of the Pursuit of God Transformation Center. And I wanna thank you. I wanna thank you for two things. Number one, I wanna thank you for tuning in to this TV telecast today. I believe that it is divinely ordained from God for you to be watching this at this appointed time. I truly believe that there's some wisdom, some revelation that's gonna come out of this telecast that's literally gonna cause a revolution to come into your life. Listen, and the second thing that I wanna thank you for, I want to tell you, you all really bless my wife and I when we see you guys out in public and you all share with us uh, some of the sermons we preach and how they've impacted your life, your marriage, and even some of the pastors, how you're saying that it has encouraged you as a pastor and caused growth to come into your ministry. I want to let you know that we do not take that for granted. It's a confirmation that we're in the will of God. So listen, again, I want you to get ready right now. I want you to get a notepad and a pen and get ready to take some notes because again I just truly believe that God is going to use me to say something that you need to hear to give you some direction some confirmation some revelation on your life and listen we're going to come back to you after the broadcast and then we're going to talk to you and give you an opportunity to do a couple things with you. Number one, I want to pray with you. I want to make sure that you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And then the second thing is, I want to pray for God to produce some miracles in your life. Some financial miracles, uh, some healing miracles, some salvation of loved one miracles. And the third thing, we want to extend an opportunity for you to partner with us in making this good news, this gospel, go throughout the earth. So God bless you. Stay tuned. Wait for me at the end of the telecast. All right. We've been teaching uh, that the church, which is one of the institutions that's under attack more than anything on earth. Matter of fact, I was uh, looking through something and I ran out that the game, the rap of the game, y'all heard of the rap of the game? Yeah. The rap of the game is coming out with an album that's called Jesus something. It's called the, the anybody know what it is? What is it? Jesus pieces. Yeah. Say it loud, man. Come on. Jesus peace. So, you know, I had to start researching his game. He didn't come a gospel rapper. So I had to go look and I found the lyrics that he's coming out with. And the lyrics where he's talking about the Jesus peace, he's talking about dope and he's talking about oral sex and 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 all this kind of, kind of stuff. And and listen to what's happening. I want you to thank for a minute. I want, I want y'all to thank. We, we shouted at the first service, but I want y'all to thank this sir. When is the last time you heard any comedian tell a homosexual joke recently? Anybody? Recently you heard anybody tell a, any public comedian tell a homosexual joke. Do you know in the W, the wrestling, WFWs, WC, whatever, do you know that they can't even use homosexual words in going off on people right now? They can't call nobody the F word right now. They can't even call nobody a S word. Now, now, am I promoting homosexual hate crime? Absolutely not. Homosexuals need as much love as the whoremongers do, as much as the crack addicts do, as much as y'all that was up in that club smoking them blunts last night. They need the same kind of love y'all got. But what I'm saying is, we, the church, need to learn from the homosexual community. What we need to learn. We need to earn, learn the value of our dollar, the value of our mouth, and the value of unity. The reason you don't hear any joke because they say you better not tell another. And we'll let some rapper go write a song that's got our Jesus in it. And matter of fact, the rapper said, if you scared, go to church. Why? Because the church, <laughs> we've been our biggest enemy. We've talked about us so bad that they say it's okay to talk about us. You said it, I don't like church folks. Is you retarded? How you gonna invite somebody to come to a place and you telling them you don't like the folks that's at the place that you're trying to get them to come to? 
And what has happened is we have chosen celebrity status, popularity, over standing bold on the word of God at for sake of being rejected by man and accepted by God, we've taken the popular route and we have not defended the words to God, the institution of the church, and not even the institution of marriage. So now everybody can talk about the church, degrade the church, put the church down, and nobody says nothing. Y'all sit up there and let Jamie Foxx say that Obama is Lord and Savior. And you, let, you thought that was fun. He's just a comedian. No, he a going to hell comedian. Obama ain't my Lord and Savior. My wife ain't my Lord and Savior. My mama ain't my Lord and Savior. I only got one Lord and Savior, and his name is Jesus. Now, he won't tell no jokes about sinners, but he'll tell jokes about the church. That preacher mad. No, I'm passionate. You've run into a passionate preacher. Oh, my. When last time you seen one of them? <laughs> you seen some intellectuals. You see some cute ones. But it's time for some passion to come back to the house of God. In this particular teaching, what we've talked about is we've talked about how the church is the answer for every problem on earth. Every economic problem is, divine, is, is the answer to it is in the church. Matter of fact, and, 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 and listen, listen, y'all, listen, listen, listen. The, the world is beginning to recognize it because y'all church is in the paper again two weeks in a row. Tell me what African-American church in this city has had full-page stories three times this year and it ain't no scandal. Well, they over there in Frazier. Jesus over there in Nazareth. They got full stories. They're saying there are 15 people in the world. This, this, this is what it started off saying. We wake up, we worship, and we work in Frazier. Our purpose is to transform praise. Where they get that from? They got that from us. They, they just saying this. We've been saying this for 10 years. It said these are 15 people. They may not deter the future of, determine the future of Frazier. It's 40,000 residents will, but they aren't, but there aren't 15 people in the world. This, this, what, the, this what your papers say. There aren't 15 people in the world who's working harder to change Frazier and bam, there y'all is up in here. Yeah. Somebody said, we getting ready to do this. They had, they had us praying for three minutes. They paid for a video for us to pray for three minutes and announce Jesus' name. Do you know how much one of these pages costs in this paper? One page, this back page here, costs $25,000. And we done had our own page three times this year. Well, 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 they the, they, that's the, they the prince of the world. That's the, that's the world paper. They the prince of the world. The media, the prince of the air. Listen, the king's heart is in his hand. If he can change the king's heart, then he can change the prince's mind. Hallelujah. See, we doing something. And don't you be the last one to find out that you doing something. Somebody said the church is the answer. Say it three times like you're trying to convince yourself that you. Say it three more times.
What's the answer to teen pregnancy? What's the answer to divorce? What's the answer to poverty? What's the answer to sickness and disease? Well, who is the church? Bible says, he said, he is the head and we are the body. Then it says the church. Hallelujah. When you let Jesus become the head of the body, then a church is formed. A church is an institution that's designed by God, an organization that's designed by God, an organism that's designed by God to expand God's authority, kingdom, influence, and dominion on earth. Our job is to make earth look like heaven. Phrase, it don't look like heaven right now. But that's why God took some of us out of East Tennessee, some of us out of Bartlett, some of us out of South Memphis, some out of Scudderfield, some out of Westwood, took some of us out of Mississippi, took us from Germantown, brought us all back here. Why? Because he want us to change this thing. And brought some of y'all out of some, woo, some sin. Some stanky, stanky. So we talked about that, and I want to. I want to. Uh, I, I had to do that little review because we got a lot of first timers here. But we began to cover that last week, and this we want to talk about. We talk about in order for the kingdom to come and God's will is going to be done, that there has to be some seeking. Somebody says seek. seek. We talked about how we got to seek ye first. Seek ye. First. Seek ye. First. If, if we seek in that first, that means every other thing comes behind my pursuit of the kingdom. And then we discover that most people don't even understand what seeking means. So we gave a definition of seeking. There are four components to the word seeking. The word seek means to inquire, to desire, to require, and then to acquire. What happens is when we seek, we start trying to acquire, but we don't even know what God requires. We hadn't gone to God and asked God, God, what do you want me to do? Now we go to God and tell him what we want him to do. Somebody said, that's twisted. You're going to go to the author and the finisher of your faith and tell him what you want him to do. Most of us have no idea what God wants us to do in our life. We don't have no idea what God created us to do. That's why in Matthew 3, well, what is Matthew 3 and, uh, no, Matthew 6 and 11, he said, therefore, take no thoughts saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? Now, we talked last week about we made it plain. I ain't got a lot of time to go to that week, but we made it plain last week on how much time. How many people were not here last week? Raise your hand. If you don't be, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna rebuke you. Just raise your hand. I'm, I'm gonna see how much you rebuke. If you were not here last week, we made it plain last week of how much time. It said, don't be focusing on what you're gonna eat, what you're gonna drink, and what you're gonna wear. We broke it down time-wise on the average day. How much time do you spend trying to figure out what color I'm going to wear? Am I going to wear a dress today? Am I going to wear jeans today? Do these ear bobs match these shoes? Is my eyelashes too long? Is it too short? Is my wig too long? Is my skirt too long? Is it too short? Does this make me look fat? Does this make my head look big? Should I shift this to the left? Do this color is my gray short? We spend all that time, then, then when we get to work, I got to get some coffee, I need to get some breakfast, I need some oatmeal, I need a bacon sandwich, sauce, y'all ain't put my jelly, they left my mayonnaise off, I want some mustard, they ain't got no sugar, I don't like, I like sweet and low. Then you get to the job, what I'm going to eat for lunch today, where we going, how much they like, who got the special, that y'all ain't got the chicken wings today, I like the chicken wings, or then when you get back to work, oh, I'm sleeping, I shouldn't have ate all that. I've only been here about a year and two or three months. Um, it seems like I've been here for years. Pastor Ricky and co-pastor Sheila, they embraced me the moment I arrived. The, um, me and my daughter Christina, um, we felt love, instant love um, from them. There was a time where I thought that I had to serve, 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 serve in order to be um, accepted in ministry. Um, that it was based on my talents. 
but they wanted to heal me from the inside out. And it was a lot of things that I had going on in my life. <sighs> that if it had not been for that unconditional love that they showed me and my baby, I think I would still be in that same complacent, stagnated state that I was in a year ago. I didn't know whether I was coming or going. And God put me in this place, not just to sing praises unto God and to worship and to show other people how to worship before healing. And I'm, I'm going through that process of healing and it's, it's the greatest healing. we begin to add up how much time we spent on what I should wear, what I shouldn't wear, who liked this, and that's what she got on, and, and what I should eat. Now, oh, I shouldn't have drank that, I drank too many of them last night. <laughs> and then we, 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 we tried to equate that to how much time this morning, on, this is on the way to church now. How much time did this morning did I spend before the Lord said, Lord, what would you have me to do this morning? And most of us, our shoes got more time than God did. Most of us, what necktie we was going to wear this morning got more time than we spent in the presence of the Lord asking the Lord. Well, so the Lord said, don't spend all your time on that. Now he said, I know you need some food. Listen, I know you need something to drink. And listen, I know some of y'all need weave makeup and eyelashes. I'm not anti-weave. Some of them hairs need some hair on it. I, we said last week, everybody can't go natural. Some of y'all need to go supernatural. <laughs> I'm not anti-natural. My daughter's gone natural. You can go, somebody needs to stay supernatural. Uh, my wife told me she come tell me she going natural. No, you ain't. I'm going natural. Why are you divorcing me? I ain't done nothing. She ain't going natural. She gonna stay supernatural. So, so the Lord knows you need your makeup. He know you need your shoe. He know you need something to eat. He know you need something to drink. But more than needing all that, the Gentile needs that. He wants you to know that you need him. Yeah. And listen to me. He wants you to know that not only do you need him, but there are some people that need you to know that you need him. Yeah. Because when you know that you need him, you'll do what you're supposed to yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Then it says in Matthew, it says, but seek ye first the kingdom, the kingdom, kingdom, the kingdom. Seek thee first the kingdom. What's the kingdom? The kingdom is the power of God. See, it's okay to have power. Tell your neighbor, it's okay to have power. But you just want power. It's okay to have power. We, and listen, if you're a Christian, you're supposed to have power. What good is a Christian without having power? It's like salt without having savor. Like a flashlight with no battery. What good is a flashlight that doesn't have any power to produce the light? God wants us to have the light. He wants us to be the light. He wants us to have the power. So he's saying, seek the power. Well, where's the power? The power is in your identity. The power is in the presence of God because when you get in the presence of God, listen, you find out that you were created in his image and his likeness and you begin to discover who you are. And when you discover who you are, you'll discover why you are. And when you discover who you are and why you are, you will discover what you have the ability to do. That's why some of you are trying to find out who your biological daddy is because you think your daddy's presence is going to give you some power. But your natural daddy's presence many times will give you more pain if he ain't connected to God. Glory to God.
Now, we say we got to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now, when I seek the kingdom of God and, somebody say and. and. See, I just can't seek his power. I got to seek his power, and then when I get the power, uh, I got to get access to the power. I got to seek how I'm going to act right with the power. Okay. Income tax time. Some of y'all some finna get some money power. Yeah, you finna get some kingdom type power. Yeah, it finna be big head hunter city up in some of y'all house. But when you get that power, are you going to act right with that power? Will the kingdom be influenced by your power? Or will the kingdom of darkness be advanced because of your power? It's the, it's the dope man's... Is the dope man's influence going to go up higher than your church's influence? Is the hoe's influence going to go up more than your wife's influence when you get your little check? Is your baby or your boyfriend influence going to go up when you get your money? We will soon see. How y'all go from more money to no money in 30 days? More, more money, show money, no money. <laughs> we talked about how seek. He says, if you seek the king, the presence of the king, will awaken the royalty that's in you. Okay, let me, let me say, if you are a musician, you might not even knew you were a musician, but you got around somebody that was skillful and they wakened something up in you. Maybe you were a poet and you'd never seen anybody do a poetry before, but when you got around a great poet, you was like, I, I like that, I could do that, I feel that. You got around a great cook. They, the presence always provokes something. Why? Because the presence releases an essence. That's why Bishop Warren says, you are the sum total of the anointings that you are exposed to. See, some of you need to come to church just because you need to be exposed to something different. You've been through hell all week. You need to come to church so you can get exposed to some essence of heaven. Hallelujah. Now, 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 it says, it says that, but without faith, it's impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible. But without faith, it's impossible to please God. How you going to please God if you ain't got no faith? Well, I got faith. Well, how you going to get faith if you ain't been hearing? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Well, I can read my Bible. You can. You can cook your own chicken. But you still go to Kentucky Fried. Yeah, you can change your all own oil, but you go to Jiffy Lou. You can fix your own house. Listen. But you still go to the beauty shop. Praise the Lord. Well, why is it that we, don't, we want exclusive when it comes to the word of God? You can trim your own mustache. It's going to be looking like that, but. <laughs> you work for the circus. <laughs> now, <laughs> he says in this word here, listen. Without faith it's impossible to please to God, but he that comes to God. Listen, when you come to God. You must believe. Now think about how many times have you came to God and you didn't believe? Why didn't you believe? Because you didn't have no faith. Why you have no faith? Because you hadn't heard. Why hadn't you heard? Because you let someone tell you you didn't have to go to church. And when you didn't go to church, you didn't get no faith. You didn't get no faith, you can't please God, and then you stay out of church because you're not pleasing to God, and you're afraid of his presence because you think he's going to whoop you. Yeah. 
Listen, he said, I love this, I love this. He says, he says, he that cometh to him must believe that he is and. You not only got to believe that he is, but you got to believe and. Not just that he is, you got to believe and. And what? And he is a rewarder. Who he reward? He reward everybody. No, he doesn't reward everybody. He reward those. Which, which, which one of those? Those that diligently seek him. That means that when it's inconvenient, when the weatherman says a storm outside, I'm still going to seek him. When the parking spaces ain't good, when the neighborhood is bad, is God over there? Well, that's where I'm going. Have you ever felt like you were on the wrong path, the wrong track, like life was leading you or you were being led in the wrong direction? Listen, we want to give you an opportunity to come to the Pursuit of God Transformation Center to get back on track, to get in the wheels and the ways of the things of God. And we want to give you an opportunity to check us out before you literally come. We want to tell you our TV times. We want to thank God for the good news station here in Memphis, Tennessee, WTWV. And you can check us out on Sunday mornings. We're on at 5.30 a.m. At Monday mornings, we're on at 7 a.m. And then you can check us Wednesday nights, 5.30 p.m. And then Saturday night, 10.30 p.m. Tune in to the Pursuit of God telecast and watch God bless you. And listen, if this is a place where it appears that you can grow and learn and be developed and be blessed and yet also can be a blessing, we want to encourage you and come get on track at the Pursuit of God Transformation Center. God bless you. Looking forward to seeing you. And there you have it. You've just experienced what takes place regularly at the Transformation Center. Listen, we just want to invite you to come on in and have a real encounter. Go to our website at thepursuitofgod.org or call us at 901-353-5772 so that we can give you more information about what we're doing and keep you abreast to all of the services and the events that we have. We trust that God met you at the point of your expectation and we just encourage you, come and fellowship with us at the Transformation Center. If you'd like to see this message in its entirety, please connect with us on Facebook at Pursuit of God Church, Memphis. Feel free to like and share our videos with your friends and family. Social media is a big part of what we do, and we strive to provide relevant information about our church and our upcoming events. God bless you.